You are very old. It's time to get on with it. All right, good shot right there on the green. Why are you playing par threes at 190 yards? There's another <laughs> tee box. Just move right up there and you can hit your three iron all day. Welcome to the Hot List, presented by Dick Sporting Goods and Golf Galaxy. We are talking irons today. I'm Mike. He's... I'm Mike also, somehow. Excellent. Working out perfectly. We're here to talk about irons for better players for the most part today. We've got our players iron category and then one that's dear to your heart. Players distance iron, the fastest growing category in the iron game today. And I think it's an iron that not only works for better players, but really kind of the mid-handicapper who really believes that he's either aspiring to get better or maybe he's lost a little, little hop off his fastball and needs to get a little bit more juice. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Uh, I've been playing players distance irons for a number of years now, but you know- You are very old. I am very old. Let's go to the players iron category to start though. I mean, these are not your grandfather's butter knife blade muscle backs of years gone by. I mean, to think just because they're a player's iron that they are devoid of technology is making a big mistake. What we talk about uh, when it comes to irons today is forgiveness on a heel to toe basis. So in other words, if I miss it a little bit off center, it's still gonna go the same sort of dif distance. What you're seeing is a lot of tungsten in these player's irons. And we, again, when we talk about player's irons, we're basically talking about a single material iron in terms of the face. The face is not necessarily contributing a lot in terms of distance, but you're getting forgiveness in terms of the heel toe weighting and maybe a little forgiveness as well uh, at the sole. You've got a lower C center of gravity, so you're gonna get a little bit higher launch. Yeah, and then you go to the player's distance category, and as the name implies, the goal is distance, right? And what that means is driver design is trickling down into irons. Things like cup faces that used to only be in metal woods or drivers, now are prevalent in these type of irons. And along with that, you're getting incredibly, incredibly thin faces. I mean, 1.5 millimeters thick, about the width of a dime or something. So what you need to do in that, when you make the face really thick, the sound can get a little iffy. The pursuit of distance can be a, a crazy drug and you, you get the face as thin as you possibly can. You get a lot of flexibility. You get a lot of unwanted vibration. So what we're seeing in the player's distance category is things injected into that structure, you know, a foam material, a, a, a urethane material, uh, t materials that have special elements of air pockets. The whole idea is, can this material sort of support the flexing of the face so you're still getting the speed, but dampen the vibration so you, you get the good feel that you're expecting from a player's iron. Right, and the neat trick in that is you need to come up with a material that's still going to allow the face to flex while still supporting the face and giving you the rebound on the way back. Yeah, to me, the, the sort of deciding point, and again, when you think about this iron purchase decision, you've got to get with a fitter and you've got to put a little trust in the fitter to kind of see what you're doing and what you need, and he's going to direct you whether it's a player's iron approach or a player's distance irons approach, he's going to find that right, right mix for you. But I, I think the, uh, the, the challenge in this category is, do I play golf based on my best shots? Do I play golf to control ball flight? Or do I want a certain shape, but I want distance in that shape? Yeah, and I think the fitting point is really important. It, when you go for a fitting and you're in between these categories, really take stock of what it is exactly that you are looking for. If distance is your objective, don't be afraid to say that. There, there's no shame in saying I've lost half a club or a full club. Lord knows I've done that. Obviously, with these type, types of irons, players are trying to control ball flight. They also look at the way the sole design, generally speaking, this set of clubs, whether it's players or players distance, is going to have uh, a narrower sole that's going to allow you to sort of manipulate ball flight a little bit. So how the club works through the turf can be really important in how you say, hey, this is the club for me. But more importantly, I think we have a clear illustration of the difference in terms of the one thing that matters, distance. Absolutely. 
So I've got two clubs here from TaylorMade. I have their P760 iron, which is a player's iron. Uh, like we said, not devoid of technology. It has a little bit of foam injected in it to make it feel good and give it a little bit of spring. But their P790 iron is the workhorse in the player's distance category. I mean, this was a big hit when it first came out. The new version has even been updated further. The foam filling inside gives it plenty of rebound. The face is plenty springy, and we should see some noticeable differences here. And I've got a lovely shot at the fifth hole at Pebble Beach. It says it's 143 to the pin. My normal seven is somewhere around there. A little gust roams. Do I get closest to the pin? All right, good shot right there. On the green, 138 yards with that ball. As I said, that's right around my stock distance for a seven iron. Now let's see what we can get with the player's distance iron. I'm gonna look at that ball speed, 111. Whoops. Good contact there as well. And as you can see, that's now at the back of the greens. But look at that ball speed difference. Look at the ball. I mean, 153 carry there. Uh, ball speed is 120 miles an hour. If we can go back and take a look at the previous, it'll really kind of show the differences here. Well, again, your, your, your descent angle is, is going to be a little, a little flatter, but still very, very good um, to keep the ball on the green. And I, I'm, again, I'm looking at this logically. Why do I not want more distance? Well, exactly. I mean, if that ball went to the back of the green, it's about 16 yards further. So it's 154 yards, which is about what I used to hit my seven iron 30 years ago when I was a semi-young man. And the big semi takeaway is it's not that the ball ended up on the back of the green. What it really means is instead of hitting a seven iron, I could be hitting an eight iron. And who doesn't want to do that? Well, and that's, that's interesting that you talk about distance and, and controlling the ball flight. On tour, there's actually a, a trend now to get a little bit more of this player's distance mentality in, in their iron sets. We just had a phone call not that, not that long ago where the sort of interest at the tour level in distance is significantly greater than it was in their iron game. But then you go down to the web.com level or the the corn ferry tour level and it's twice what it used to be in terms of players wanting more distance in their iron you go down to the collegiate level and the and the better young amateur level they said it's quadruple the level of interest in getting distance in their irons well and that only makes sense right because what you have are younger players have grown up playing with this technology and they want to continue playing with this technology they don't want to go backwards they want to keep going keep moving forward well and the, but you talk about tour players some of the older tour players Phil Mickelson likes a little heat in his irons. He tends to play stronger lofts, and he tends to put some of these players' distance irons in his bag. Absolutely, and you know, again, to the point, even on the players' irons, you know, these are what I refer to as the modern-day players' iron, and literally every PGA Tour player, save for a handful who still like their muscle-back blades, they've got at least one or two of these in the bag in the long irons, and many of them have a complete set. Again, we believe the whole point of the game and new technology is to find a way to get to easier. I'm not sure why you would not want how much easier the game can be with a player's distance iron versus a player's iron, but again, I'm coming at this from, from a very poor place, a man who doesn't know distance <laughs> in any form. <laughs> well, uh, it dovetails nicely into our question today from Justin C. in New Jersey who says, I play a 190 yard par three where I normally hit my three iron. The rest of my foursome keeps telling me to get a hybrid instead. Are they right? I like my three iron. Well, you know what, Justin? You probably liked your flip phone and you probably liked paper maps at one time too, but you know, it's time to get on with it. And uh, unless you have a parking spot at this week's tour event, uh, keep the three iron out of the bag. You may not have to go for a hybrid, a player's distance three iron maybe is for you, or, or a game improvement three iron, but uh, a player's three iron, probably not something you want. Well, interestingly enough, it's very difficult to get a three iron as part of a stock set today. Yeah, special seeing, order. 
seeing it much more often the case that the sets are starting with the four iron. And yes, we know lofts have kind of been strengthened and today's four iron is yesterday's three iron. We get it. I would say, Justin, why are you playing par threes at 190 yards? There's another <laughs> tee box. Just move right up there, and you can hit your three iron all day. You can hit that seven iron right on uh, the hole right there, right? You could do that, too. Okay. All right. If you have any additional questions for us, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. Until next time.